Hey friends, greetings. I'm Thomas Schwabe of Light Metaphors. Want to thank you for tuning in to this channel. If this is your first time and you're blessed, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and uh, be free to just uh, go and share your comments as well. Um, I like responding to uh, comments at times the best uh, I can uh, do. Uh, if I don't have an answer, I just won't uh, respond. Um, but yeah, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, and thanks for uh, <clears throat> subscribing if you've uh, hit this subscribe button um, in the past and you're back. God bless you. I hope you're continually being encouraged, strengthened in your spirit and growing and uh, walking with God and, and growing in the Lord, in the spirit. And, uh, you know, today I'm going to share uh, a little bit from the what I, describe, I call the ancient art of meditation. You know, meditation was a practice, a spiritual a discipline, a practice, an art form uh, in which uh, in the ancient days and, and that the ancient peoples practiced and walked in and, and uh, um, um, uh, utilized often in their lives. And, um, and one of the first scriptures it talked about in the Genesis, it talked about Jacob, how he went out into a wide open field to meditate. And so uh, that gives us a real big picture there. There's a picture there symbolically that as we begin to come into the place of meditation upon the thoughts of God, the words of God, it will begin to um, bring us into a vast open place in which we will begin to see the vastness of God's thoughts. He, or God will begin to open up the layers, if you will, hidden layers and depths of God's thoughts. Um, to us, uh, we will begin to see what we did not see before, and it's an incredible uh, uh, art, uh, um, something I integrated into my life in my early years that helped me incredibly in the restoration of my thought life and my mind and healing of my mind, for I came out of a place of just so much mental uh, torment and emotional bondage and mental torment, um, but it took that uh, process, God, uh, in... <clears throat> God implanted into me such an incredible, uh, voracious hunger and, and delight and desire to meditate the Word, to read it, to study it, and it, it just it was uh, engrafted, if you will, inside of me, and it brought such incredible restoration and healing in my life. And so, yeah, when we enter into that place, uh, um, I'm, uh, we will begin to see that the Lord uncovers things, depths of depths, different layers of things hidden things that we did not know or see before. And so I want to talk about particularly in this art of meditation, the power of, uh, uh, in, the, um, uh, in the process of meditation, the power of, the, of that uh, process or that art of that activity uh, to remove things, to displace things, and to literally pluck things up out of our, our, uh, out of our minds, out of our hearts. And so I want to read a, a one from one scripture and it's, it's uh, Proverbs 25, uh, verse 4 and 5. And it says, um, it says in uh, verse, verse 4, it says, Remove uh, the dross, or remove or take away the dross from the silver. Remove the dross from the silver, and a vessel for a silversmith will come forth. Uh, a, and a vessel for the silversmith will come forth. Or take away the dross from the silver. Remove the dross from the silver, and it will go to the silversmith for jewelry. And it will go to the silversmith for jewelry. Take away the dross. Remove the dross from the silver, and uh, and it will be a. Uh, and there comes out a vessel for the smith, fit for the smith, or fit to make fine jewelry. You know, our, our soul is like a jewel, or is like silver, if you will. Um, our soul, the like the uh, soul, the, our, our spirit is is can be likened to the that gold because the God, the glory of God is within us. God is within us. Our spirit is in union with God, and and usually gold is the color for the glory of God or God's nature, the divine nature, and then the soul is a representative of like uh, the uh, of the uh, of silver of the silver. You know, the pure silver, and the more silver is pure, uh, purified from dross, the more 
the uh, um, contaminants are, are purged out or refined out of the s silver, the more it shines and it actually will mirror whatever is before it. And our soul, God created our soul. Um, I call it, uh, um, it's, I define it as the medium of expression of the human spirit, of God within the spirit. It's the medium of expression. If we don't have a soul, we can't really express really uh, um, through our lives, feelings and, and, and our thoughts and and, and uh, choices and emotions we can't make choices it's it's the area in which choices are made it's the area in which we release joy peace our, our laughter joy uh, uh, weeping it's a place where emotions the seed of emotions are established in the soul the mind is there the will so it's that silver if you will and God wants to remove the dross from the silver remove the dross from um, uh, the soul. The dross can be defined as anything that is contrary to God, uh, uh, to what God says, to His truth, to His word. It could be areas in which we're believing a lie, or, or fear, worry, anxiety, um, um, uh, insecurities, all these things that at some time in our life, uh, we they were allowed, we allowed them in, or they came into our lives, and, and through repetition, uh, a trauma or something, they were es established something for the enemy to to really uh, oppress us and, and mold and shape our lives. Uh, it's in that area of the soul in which these things um, have their entrance. And so he's saying uh, that God wants to remove the, the dross from, uh, from, uh, from the silver. The dross from the silver, again, so that word uh, remove, that word um, um, take away, it's, it's the Hebrew word for meditate. It's the Hebrew word haga. Now, and again, the, the scripture um, has two primary, um, uh, uses two primary words are used for meditation um, in the scriptures. One is haga, and the other is siach. And so in this scripture, that word haga is being used, but it's being used in the context of removing and, and displacing and, and plucking out. So a, as we begin to meditate upon the word, meditate. You know, Paul um, talks about uh, the church, the bride, and he talks about how he's cleansed her through the washing of the water of the word. John the Apostle, in his vision on the island of Patmos, um, he had a vision of Jesus. And one of the things he described is that his voice was like the sound of many waters, many waters. So we can understand that the Word of God is likened to water, like moving water, not stagnant water. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So God's words, when He speaks, it's like a river of life, a river of spirit. When we speak the Word of God, we're tapped into the Spirit of God. Relationship out of a place of intimacy and relationship with God. In God, we hear His voice and we speak it. We're like releasing water out of our lives, out of our mouths, and it's influencing the hearer. The hearer, the receiver, he's receiving that life-giving spirit. He's receiving spirit. He's receiving the refreshing water. Like Jesus said uh, regarding the woman at the well, if you would have known, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. So the living water, he, uh, and the, on the, great, the last and greatest day of the feast, he cried out in a loud voice, If any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. For he said that as out of for out of his innermost being, as he believed, out of his innermost being will flow a river of living water. And he spoke of the spirit, and the word is spirit. You know, the word is spirit; it's life. And so God's word is likened to water. It, it, it moves. It has movement. It has life. And the power of it has the power to cleanse, to to move the smoothen things out to remove things, debris, to cleanse and, and, uh, and to wash. Uh, I'm, I'm reminded of uh, the, the story with, um, with uh, David and Goliath. You know, there was a time where he went, it said that he went to and grabbed five smooth stones from the river. And as he did, these stones, they were there, and he used the stone to knock out Goliath. You know, he used the sling and he knocked Goliath out, 
with one of these stones and knocked him head on, forehead, and he went out. And God wants to, these stones are metaphoric or symbolic of revelation. And God wants us to be a people who, who draw from the flowing river, who draw from the stream, the, the, the sound of many waters, so people who can hear the sound of God's voice and receive the stone of revelation, stones of revelation, in which we can use to take authority over things in our lives, around our lives, to, to take authority in, uh, and uh, control over things within, uh, to take authority over thoughts and things within our lives that are not of Him. You know, these things, I heard the voice of God once say, to me, um, kill, kill the giants in your mind first. And then you will have authority to kill the giants outside of your mind. You know, if we're trying to kill something outside of our mind, the giants, but yet we have a stronghold, a giant within our mind, we're not going to be very effective. Because as you shift, things are shifted in, in, in within, change from within, where our perspective has changed, we will have authority uh, and uh, rise above that which we see on the outside, an obstacle. We'll have authority over that which would be a fear, a giant of fear, if we, if we uh, have allowed the authority of God to displace any fear within us, thought patterns that are, cause us to be fearful. How can we overcome something that's fearful on the outside when we have a thought pattern within us that's established as a stronghold of fear within us? And, but so God comes and He gives us these stones of revelation, smooth stones, and they come from the voice of the Lord. They come from the, uh, out of His mouth. They come from within the Spirit and, and the river. The stream, the sound of many waters, the Word of God is like a living stream. It's a flow of God's thoughts. God's words are His thoughts penned out by the writers. And we are those that receive the thoughts of God, the Word of God. And so as we begin to eat the Word of God, as we begin to meditate upon the Word of God, we allow it to spin within us. Uh, I call it spinning the wheel of God's Word. We mutter it to ourselves over and over. It begins to displace. It begins to wash. It begins to uh, uh, cleanse and, and, and remove the dross from the silver. Remove the dross from within our soul. And, you know, another thing about rivers is... Uh, you know the the Hebrew word for understanding. It's the understanding is dis, is is the is the Hebrew word bina, and it's also described as a river. So understanding is like a river. Bina, understanding is like a river. Wisdom is the Hebrew word hakma, and it's like a fountain. It's described as a fountain, the fountain the fountain of wisdom, the bubbling brook of wisdom. Um, but understanding bina is likened to a river. And so as I was thinking about that, you know, I was thinking about that river. I thought of Psalm chapter 1 where the psalmist describes the man who meditates on the Word of God. And his, he says, his delight is in the law of the Lord, the Word of God. And on his word or his law, he meditates day and night. Then it says that he shall be like a tree planted by streams of water who's, who bears his fruit in his own season. That's an incredible picture there of meditation, of a man who meditates. You know, men are described as trees in the Bible. That's one of the metaphoric uh, metaphors in a dream in dream language. Is trees represent people or leaders? But like he just, he shows you there that he shall be like a tree planted by streams of water. What's incredible is if we if you've been in the mountains next to a, uh, a stream or a river where there's trees that grow, are growing along the bank. It's it's incredible because that's a, such a, a a flourishing place for a tree. You know, because the tree's roots are go right down into that nutrient-rich, moist soil because it's always in contact with the stream or the river. So the root system is drawing from that moisture. And it's the same with us as we begin to meditate upon God's Word, as we begin to uh, allow the roots of our heart and our mind and our thoughts to life to to tap into the word the moving stream of thought of the understanding the the river of understanding the river of god's words flowing from his stone the sound of his voice that we get in a place where we're tapped in our root system is tapped into that we will begin to become very fruitful it will begin to be uh, we will begin to be a people that are very um full of life as peace and energy and grace. And that's the key. That's a key 
uh, it's key for us to be a people that meditate day and night on the Word of God. And we will be like a tree planted by streams of water. And as we're tapped into that river, that spirit of understanding, that spirit of Bina, that river of Bina, that, that, that river will be the very thing that smoothens things out of our, in our soul, smoothens the rough places out. Uh, begins to flatten the, the rough edges out, smooth the rough edges out. Uh, iron, uh, like uh, it's, it's the Word of God that has the water of God's Word, begin to uh, 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 purify and, 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 and remove the dross. Uh, His Word is likened to fire. Again, remove, meditate, haga, the dross from the silver. Remove the dross from the silver and you will have a vessel fit for the smith. Remove the dross from the silver. Haga, that's the Hebrew word haga, remove. So meditate is used in the in this scripture in the context of removal. And so the word of God is also likened to like a refiner's fire. It's fire. It's like pure fire. It's it's like the he said to the prophet, "Is not my word my word? I will make my word in your mouth like a fire, and the people that you speak to will be like stubble." It's a consuming fire. God, God is a consuming fire. His word is fire. And so it's that pure holy fire, uh, I think it's in Proverbs, it says the word of God is like uh, um, gold, refined seven times in the fire, refined seven times, seven a number of perfection uh, on the seventh day God rested. It, it, it's, it's that power of, of purifying power, uh, it's a purifying power, and it, it has the ability to drop, remove the dross. So as we meditate, in that engage in that art the dross will be removed you know god removes it god's thoughts are high thoughts god's thoughts are the the dominant thoughts are the lofty thing are the loftiest thoughts god's thoughts are the highest thoughts the loftiest thoughts he says as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there without watering the earth and making it bear and sprout providing uh, bread, uh, seed for the sower and bread for, for the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. You know, it will not return to me empty or void, but will accomplish what I desire and succeed in the matter for which I sent it. For as the rain and the snow come down from above, God's thoughts are lofty. God's word is high. It's exalted. And there is to be no other thing exalted in our lives, in our thought life, in our mind, other, uh, beyond God's, uh, God's thoughts. Nothing else or else it is contrary to the Word of God. And it must be displaced. It must be removed. But as we engage in the art of meditation, there will be a removing. There will be a plucking up. There will be a purifying uh, through that in that process that's the power of meditation friends I want to encourage you be like a tree planted by streams of water meditate on the word day and night Moses said to Joshua as he began to transition away and and the new leadership uh, Joshua the Joshua generation was coming into a, a position of leadership Moses said do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may be careful to do everything that is written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. See, there is a fruit of meditation as well, a prosperity and success. The fruit of meditation is prosperity and, and success, but it's also the power of purification and, re, and removing. Um, and so uh, 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 Moses was saying, do not let this book of the law depart from your mouths. Meditate on it day and night. So meditation is a muttering. It's an audible but inaudible activity. You can dwell and spin a thought. It's a cyclic activity. You can roll it around in your mind, the thoughts over and over. And eventually what you think on over and over is going to sink down into your heart and it's going to come out of your mouth because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's what you've been dwelling on over and over. I guarantee you, whatever anybody has been dwelling on, uh, we can tell, you can tell what uh, people's dwelling on uh, a lot in their thought life. It, just listen to what they talk about a lot. That's the predominant thing in their, in their life. It, it comes out of their mouth. It's revealed. And, and God wants uh, to bring forth uh, the, 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 His thoughts. Uh, allow his thoughts to be meditated upon, chewed upon in such a way that as the Apostle Paul exhorts, let the word of Christ dwell in your heart richly. 
abundantly, bountifully. That's what it means. And as we begin to let it dwell within us through meditation, bountifully and abundantly, uh, we allow it to wor actively work in us because the Word of God is at work in us. It's alive. It's living and it's active. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It pierces. Uh, and, and it's at work in us as we meditate, as we chew upon that, that word. Uh, um, God will begin to release the divine power of the, of the word of God in our lives. Now, I'm going to go into that next uh, portion of that uh, um, uh, verse. And, and this is uh, verse 5, which is very interesting too. And it's the same Hebrew word, haga. So he says, remove... The wicked, take away the wicked from before the king, or remove the wicked man from before the king. Take away the wicked from, remove, take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Take away the wicked from amongst the king. Remove the wicked man from amongst the king, and the king's throne will be established in righteousness. Now again, that word remove, take away, it's the Hebrew word haga. It's the Hebrew word for meditate. So we're talking about the ancient art of meditation and how that word meditate is used in the context of removal, taking away, of plucking up, removing, taking away, plucking up, displacing. And this Hebrew word, this art of meditation is used in this context, in this, in this scripture to show us that the, the power, the dynamic power, one of the dynamic uh, powers, that one of the activities that occur when we're engaged in the process of the art of meditation. Remove the wicked man from amongst the king. Remove the wicked man from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. His throne shall be established in righteousness. You know, within our soul, there should be no other throne other than the throne of the king. And in the process of meditation, the king will overthrow any other thrones established within our soul. You know, within the soul of man can be thrones that have been established by the enemy. These thrones are described, if you will, uh, can be described as the thought patterns, the fortresses, the house made of the house, a uh, uh, house made of thoughts, the strongholds, the fortresses within the mind that are constructed or are, are developed by a th uh, embracing a pattern of thought in which it becomes habitual. It becomes an established stronghold, a fortress. The very thing that Paul was talking about, we are destroying speculations and high things and exalted lofty things that exalt themselves up against the knowledge of God. And uh, he was talking about describing, um, taking into captivity every thought. Those things are considered the strongs. We are destroying strongholds, speculations. And these are the very things that furnish a seat, a furnish a throne in the soul. You know, I read a years ago, I rem it reminded me of a book I read years ago by, I think it was Paul Keith Davis. Um, he talked uh, about the thrones of our soul. And basically he was saying that there is these thrones within our souls. They were entities uh, uh, where entities would um, land or they would um, uh, use uh, as their throne, a place, a position to influence, to exercise authority and control. And that's how it is. It, those strongholds, the enemy would use those th as thrones to sit on, if you will, and rule and, and, and exercise authority and control. Authority influencing our lives and controlling our lives, various aspects of our life uh, and controlling us to direct the course of our life down a, a road that's contrary to God's will for us. To literally control us. But God says, he, the scripture says here, remove the wicked man from amongst the king. Displace the wicked from before the king and his throne shall be established in righteousness. God wants to displace the wicked things within our minds. The wicked thought patterns. The wicked things are just anything that's contrary to God's ways. His ways to his perspective, to his thoughts, to his words that are taking us into bondage, that are establishing a throne within us that's not the throne of God. And those are the things that God wants to remove. And, and as it, all those things are removed in the silver of our life, the silver of the soul, God's going to begin to establish uh, his reign, his rule in every aspect of our life. Again, our spirit, God is within us, you know, 
we're our spirit is washed regenerated new we are is we ref, we are the image of god we are the image of god but the soul as i've described in other times the soul uh, our uh, the soul can be de, uh, defined as the medium of expression of the spirit our soul is the medium of expression of the spirit you know god expresses his nature his heart his ways his love his image is revealed, it's expressed through the human soul. So the human soul, it's the silver, if you will. And when the silver is purified, when the dross is removed, the more and more it's purified, the more and more it, you can see the image, an image like you look at uh, uh, incredible um, uh, pieces of silver that have, uh, you know, like plates, silver plates or platters, and, uh, and you can see your image if you look into it. It's because it's pure. It, there's no draw. The, it's been refined by the fire. And as we are, are allowing the Lord uh, to purify us, uh, and one way, as I'm talking about, the art of meditation is meditate the Word of God. Um, as we allow the power of the Word of God to purify us more and more, our souls, our mind, our will, and emotions, that which is a reality within our inner man, the image of God, uh, we begin to be... Um, expressed mirrored through that silver we'll begin to mirror the nature of god mirror jesus through our souls our minds our wills and emotions will reflect the the mind of god the feelings of god and the will of god will be done through us god is at work in us both to will and to do according to his good pleasure you know set your mind on things above not on earthly things Things above are spiritual. It's the high, lofty things. Set your mind on things above. You know, um, uh, the emotions, God wants us to be moved by the compassion, His compassion, moved by His love. These are all expressions of the divine nature of God, the image of God in us, already in us. It's one with our spirit, but He wants to express it through the medium of our soul. Express His nature. So the, the, the world can see what Jesus looks like through you and I. Hallelujah. <laughs> so remove the wicked man from amongst the king. Remove the wicked man from amongst the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Proverbs 25, 4 and 5. God wants us to engage with him and, and practice, walk in that art of meditation. Do as the ancients uh, have done in the past times. Uh, taking the the words of the teachers of the uh, uh, the words of wisdom passed down and meditated on those things allowed those things to roll around inside of them in, in such a way that it begins to uh, remove and displace and pluck out things that are contrary uh, to the truth begin to purify remove the dross that seven uh, that word of God which is like uh, gold refined in the fire seven times begins to spin inside of us begin to, to uh, re, be allowed to, a place of ascendancy of dominance within us dwelling in us making itself at, at home within us residing within us um, uh, abiding within us uh, um, as we begin to allow those thoughts of God to do that through meditation these things will occur this will happen this is the fruit of meditation this is one of the the um, benefits of meditation of, of the fruits of meditation is uh, to remove to purify uh, the dross uh, from within the soul and god wants us to be a people that are delighting ourselves in the lord and in the in and in, in meditating upon his word and as a result we will see the fruit of that um the fruit come of god come forth out of our lives be mirrored and you know where we is the scriptures say that um to put on the new self created to be like god in true righteousness and holiness true righteousness and holiness the new self and you know the new self is that which is mirrored through the soul it's put it on it's put on the soul puts it on as this process of displacing things and and allowing the uh, the purification process to come we are actually in that process progressively putting on we're being changed as he says beholding as in a mirror the glory of god are being changed from glory to glory we're beginning to mirror from glory to glory through our souls what already is 
You already are a new creation. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I once was darkness. You once were darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. It's real. It's a reality within our spirit, man. That's how God sees us. But God wants it to come forth and mirror through the soul. He wants our soul to express these things. And may God bless you and cause you to become uh, more and more uh, to bear, to release the very likeness and the image of God in which you are already and that you would reveal Jesus. Jesus to the earth, to people around you. May you be his hands, his, his eyes, his mouthpiece, his, his arms, uh, and, and his expression to those in your life and those that surround your life. And may you be uh, those that practice the art of meditation and uh, experience the benefits of the power of meditation, the ancient art of meditation. God bless you, friends. Thanks for checking out Light Metaphors. May you have a blessed week and continue growing deeper in intimacy with God. Amen.